सदाशिवसरंभा शंकराचार्यमध्यमाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा सनाथाय नम ओं श्री शंकराचार्याय नम ओं श्री शंकराचार्याय नम ओं श्री शंकराचार्याय नम ओं श्री सद्गुशिवानंदय नम ओं श्री सद्गुशिवानंदय नम ंदय नम ओं शरणागृदीनाथपरिपरायणे सर्वस्ते देवी नारायणे नमस्तुते शरणागृदीनाथपरिपरायणे सर्वस्ते हरे देवी नारायणे नमस्तुते शरणागृदीनाथपरिपरायणे सर्वस्ते हरे देवी नारायणे नमस्तुते हरि ओ वर्षिपुल होमेज टू दैट सुप्रीम इथर्नल ऑल परवेडिंग कॉस्मिक स्पिरिट डिवाइन द बिगिनिंगलेस एंड द एंडलेस ट्रांसेंडेंटल the supremely non-dual absolute being who is our source support and ultimate fulfillment and destiny love and devotion to the beloved and beloved gurudev holy master shri swami shivananda maharaj who blesses us each morning by prompting us to come into his spiritual presence in this sacred samadhi hall of his holy ashram on the sacred banks of divine mother ganga may his glance of grace ever be a light upon the path in the ultimate analysis divine grace of the supreme absolute being the cosmic universal spirit and the spiritual benedictions of the holy spiritual master constitute one and the same thing they are identical they are not two separate factors operating in the seeker's life divine grace comes to us from the supreme being divine grace also manifests in the concrete form of the guru sadguru thus the guru is no other than a concrete tangible manifestation and expression direct expression of grace of the supreme being nevertheless functioning as we are upon the plane of duality and multiplicity and living as we are in a state of dualistic relative consciousness 
we make this distinction to be able to comprehend the operation of seemingly two factors. The vast experience and the specialized and expert skill of a doctor manifests itself in the correct prescription that he prescribes, having known through his vast experience and specialized skill an accurate diagnosis having made an accurate diagnosis and pinpointed the actual trouble, when he prescribes a certain remedy, a specific remedy, this specific remedy that he prescribes actually represents in a concrete form his past experience and is highly specialized knowledge. And when this prescribed medication is taken and you are cured, do you attribute the cure to the medicine only or say, I went to this physician and he cured me? He who treated me and he who cured me, what do you say? We give the lesser see, emphasis upon the actual medication which went into your body and did the curing. We give lesser emphasis upon that. We thank the doctor, we pay him the fee, we talk about him, you see, we suggest him to other people in similar health predicament and we give all the credit to him. See, he becomes an object of our gratitude and thanks. This is how it is. Now the whole of spiritual life is in acquiring spiritual knowledge. Guru is the source of spiritual knowledge. Scriptures are the source of spiritual knowledge. Special books on specific topics or aspects of spiritual life and sadhana, they are also a source of our spiritual knowledge. The function of knowledge is to remove ignorance. We replace ignorance by knowledge and it is the knowledge itself that does this function of getting rid of ignorance and taking its place. It removes darkness and brings light. But let us ask a somewhat different question about knowledge itself apart from its function. Let us ask a different question about knowledge itself. What is the best part of knowledge? Have we ever considered this? Have we ever asked ourselves this question? We are satisfied that we have had knowledge, but what is the best part of this knowledge that we acquire? One would wish this question to be explained, but it's important to be clarified a little more. One may even ask a counter question, what do you mean, Swamiji, best part of knowledge? All of knowledge is uh, good, all of knowledge is uh, 
See, are there parts to it? What do you mean by this question? Knowledge by itself, we may say, is undivided, is one integrated thing. But there are parts of knowledge. In relation to us, when we consider knowledge and ourself, when we consider knowledge and we in relation to it, when we consider knowledge, knowledge in its relation to us, it is a dual, we are interrelated. Knowledge is related to us, we are related to knowledge. And when you consider this entire matter and situation from this interrelated aspect, the question does acquire a certain relevance. And maybe the question also does acquire an importance. What is the best part of knowledge? What are the parts of knowledge? The first part of knowledge is that we now know which we did not know before we acquired this knowledge, before we are graced or blessed with this knowledge. Just as I said, as the Guru is a manifestation of God's grace, knowledge also is a manifestation of God's grace and Guru's grace. Guru gives blessings in the form of the knowledge that gradually has the power to liberate us. Therefore, you did not know and when you got the knowledge, you knew. So knowing is a quintessential part of knowledge, making us know things, enable us to know things which we did not know until it came into our experience. It is therefore a thing of the essence. Next, to that part of knowledge which we can call knowing is when the person who was ignorant of certain things and by God's grace and his good fortune he gets all the facilities and the necessary situation to get rid of this ignorance and get knowledge. Now there is a difference in the person. He did not know or she did not know. Now this is an individual who knows. Let me ask a question. What is this, the difference between a person who does not know and a person who knows? Is there any difference at all? Does it make any difference whether a person is in a state of not knowing and whether a person is in a state of knowing? Does it make any difference? How exactly do you ask this question, Swamiji? Swamiji asked this question in the sense after attaining the knowledge, the person remains the same person as he or she was before attaining the knowledge? Or does the knowledge bring about some change in the being? Does the person become slightly different? Do you continue to be the same person or does the knowledge now enable you to be something better. 
something nobler, something more perceptive. Yes, when we did not know, we committed many errors with regard to our own subjective life, with regard to our objective transpersonal life, you know, dealing with others, you know, jumping to conclusion about others or forming opinion about others, or the way in which we move about with others, react to others. There is a difference takes place. When knowledge comes, we are more understanding, we are more tolerant, we are more sympathetic. We act with a greater spirit of give and take. Knowledge all does all these things. But there's a big if. And that big if is knowledge can do all these things and more only if you make this knowledge if you allow this knowledge to have this transforming effect upon your being you become a slightly different, better person. Because before, before you got the knowledge, you committed many errors. After you acquire this knowledge, you begin to avoid all those errors. I did so in my past when I did not know. But now I know I am no longer doing such things. I'm acting in a different way, in a better way. Knowledge first becomes knowing when previous to that we did not know. Now when we acquire knowledge, we now know its function is to bring about in us this knowledge, this knowing. But then if it's one is satisfied by keeping it in that same level, and there is no change, it does not bring about any change in you, then it is only one part of knowledge that is present in you, not a better part of knowledge. The second part of knowledge is becoming someone different in a positive and a creative uh, way for the knowledge, because of the knowledge. So that is the blessing of knowledge. The second part of knowledge is being. And there is still a better part of knowledge. This change must become a social asset. It must become a value which has and in fact, in terms of other people's well-being, of other people also, it does not remain subjective only, which people do recognize, people do see, yes, yes, that person seems to have completely changed, he's a new person now. I would hardly believe when he saw him after this interval of five or six years. He's a quite a different person to whom I saw in 1991, 1992. It is true. But then, what value does it have to others with whom you live and move? It is here, the third part of knowledge comes into our consideration. Out of becoming a knowing, knowledgeable person and out of becoming a changed person, we 
make this change with this knowledge and this knowing and this being a social asset, a value in human relationship, a value not only to our own self-culture and self-evolution and ethical and spiritual progress, but a value also in terms of the well-being, the happiness of others. Perhaps this is the best part of knowledge. The doing part of knowledge, bringing knowledge into actual manifestation in a creative pattern of human relationship, behaving with others, so that every act that you do becomes a source of benefit to others. Every act is, as it were, a seed of the well-being of others, the good of others. Bringing into their lives something positive, something very helpful, something for which they feel grateful. That is the third part of knowledge, the best part of knowledge. Knowing is good, is a wonderful part of knowledge. Being is better, is really a very praiseworthy part of knowledge, very, very valuable part of knowledge. But doing is best because it affects in a positive and a creative term, in a beneficial term, all other lives whom you touch see, as you move about in this world and live your life. It becomes a benediction, a boon, a blessing, a great desirable value in your life with others, all of us, all of God's creation. Therefore, the best part of knowledge is knowledge in practice the transforming effect of knowledge upon your being being actually felt being actually a source of auspiciousness good and benefit to others knowing everything about the culinary art from a cookery book or a whole library of cookery books makes you a very knowledgeable. You can give a lecture from a platform. You can even discuss with great knowledge uh, in a club with your compeers about various dishes you can do, various types of menus, breakfast menu, lunch menu, dinner menu, banquet menu, special menu. But it all is only knowing. And going into the kitchen, going to the bazaar and getting all the necessary things, going into the kitchen on a Sunday or during vacation time, long weekend, and preparing a beautiful meal that is better than your cookery book knowledge. For all that was within you has come into being in a concrete, visible manner, tangible manner in front of you. But even this one would say is the best part of your cookery knowledge. The best part is when you transfer it from the kitchen to the dining table and you eat it. It's when you eat it that is the best part of the knowledge of the culinary art. Now, this example 
would make it very, very clear to you what the three aspects of knowledge can do to you. All the knowledge from the cookery book, theoretical, is knowing, it is good. But when it is actually put into effect and you prepare a good meal, it is better. But the best part of your knowledge is when you actually invite a couple of close friends and then you have a nice cordial meal together at the dining hall on the dining table, then is the culminating point of your knowledge in terms of experiencing the end product of knowledge, experiencing as your own personality and enjoying the end part of knowledge, the, the partaking of what you have brought into being by your knowledge about the various recipes and how to make them from uh, sources of culinary art, cookery books, etc. So it is so in terms of human knowledge also. It has three parts, one the knowing part, second the being part, but the best part is the doing part of knowledge. And it is so in all fields of knowledge and the most so in the field of spiritual knowledge. In the field of spiritual knowledge it is most so because the ultimate fruit, ultimate resultant, ultimate product of this spiritual knowledge is forever, is eternal blessedness is everlasting life, is permanent peace, nitya shanti. There is a great difference, difference between earth and heaven. All the other secular aspects of knowledge, they are ultimate, see, products which you enjoy. They have a limited and a time-bound value, but in the spiritual field, acquiring of spiritual knowledge and being transformed by the spiritual knowledge you acquire and applying the spiritual knowledge in the form of spiritual practice in sadhana, that brings about a fruit which is forever, which is forever, it is permanent, enduring and for all times. Therefore, the great need know about these three parts of knowledge in our spiritual life and crown ourselves with the highest blessedness by taking our knowledge to its logical conclusion into its best part, the practicing and the doing and the living of the knowledge which enables us to thus reach supreme eternal beauty, supreme eternal uh, felicity, supreme eternal blessedness. That is when knowledge is true wisdom. May the divine grace of the supreme and the choicest loving benedictions of the Holy Master enable us to recognize this and fully bless ourselves by the best part of knowledge. God bless you all. Om Namo